In this video, we're going to cover the introduction to the crash course in R. So first of all, what is R? R is a programming language and environment designed for statistical computing. It first appeared in 1993 and was introduced by Robert Gentleman and Robert Ihaka and was really an implementation of the S programming language, which had been developed at Bell Labs earlier in the century. So R is free, it's open source, and it runs on a variety of operating systems. So pretty much whatever computer you have, R should run on that, no problem at all. One of the differences between R and other programming languages is that R is an interactive programming language, which means that when you type and execute code, you get immediate feedback as opposed to a compiled language, which you have to compile into a program and then execute that program. Another major advantage of R, which is useful in a statistics context or a data science context, is that it is highly extendable. So there are many user-created packages that are available for download directly into R that makes it easy to be up to date with the state-of-the-art methods that are used to do data analysis. And users can also write their own functions easily and add software libraries to R. So if you have something that you want to do in R, then it's pretty easy to uh, teach R how to do that. So where exactly do you get R? So the R project website is cranr or w, sorry, the R project website is www.r-project.org. So you can go there. Um, that's the main website. And then this link right here, which is cloud.r-project.org should take you to the download page where you can actually download and install R. So I have a Windows computer, so I would download R right here. And it, and it installs pretty much like any other program. So please download the R software and install it on your computer. However, these days most people don't use R don't use R straight out of the box. So they actually use there's different things that you can use. Uh, but one of the most popular uh, interfaces between R and yourself is through a program called R Studio, specifically R Studio Desktop. And it's a free front end for R provided by a company called R Studio. Their website is simply rstudio.com. And if you want to download R Studio, uh, you can use this link right here. So I'll open this up and that will load. And what exactly is R Studio Desktop? It is a, an integrated development environment, really. And so essentially what it does is it adds a bunch of nice features to a front end for R that makes it much nicer to program in the R programming language. And so you can download that here pretty easily. So click on that, download R Studio Desktop and install that on your computer. I guess technically you don't have to do that, but it's substantially easier and there's really no reason for you not to do it. And so we're actually going to be using R through R Studio. And so you can see that I actually have R Studio on my computer uh, already. So there's four different panes that you'll see by default when you're working with R Studio desktop. Uh, one is the source pane, and this is where you have code that you want to execute. Um, probably for you, it's gonna be on this side of the screen as opposed to this side of the screen. And I've done that mostly for teaching purposes. I find it easier to have the source over here and the console over here, which may look a little bit different from yours where I think console is down here, uh, but that doesn't work as well when I'm teaching. So I have sw switch it up and that's okay. So this is where I have all the code I want to execute. The R console is where I actually execute the code and it's going to uh, run the code, give me output, that kind of stuff. Environment and history pane is down here. And this shows you what variables or objects are loaded into your current workspace. Uh, and you can also see your history if you click on, there's the different tabs here that you, can, that you can click on. The history tab is right here. You can see what commands you've actually executed in this particular session and sometimes even in previous sessions. And this is the files, plots, packages, and help pane. And so this kind of shows you a file structure. If you want to open a file, there's a plot tab here, uh, which shows you the plots that you have created in this current session. Packages, if you click on that, it will show you what packages are available to load or are currently installed. And then there's the help tab, which is a place to get help for the uh, functions and the packages that are currently installed uh, in your version of R. So that's kind of what you'll see. We don't we don't need to go into a lot of detail about that right now, um, but you'll see how we use these as we learn more about how to use R through R Studio. So 
Uh, one of the things you may wonder is how exactly do you use R interactively? So uh, really what you want to do is you want to execute code in R in your console. So you type it in the console and you hit enter. So if you type one plus one in the R console and hit enter, then you're going to see what is produced. So let's just go over to R Studio and do that real quick. So I'm going to type in the console side here, one plus one, I hit enter. Actually, I'm going to make my code a little bit bigger here. All right, so hopefully that's a little bit easier to see. So I typed one plus one and it gives me two. And this square bracket here just lets me know what element of the vector that's produced um, is curling to the right. And since there's only a single value, then it's a vector of length one. So it's the first element in that. So that's how we execute code in R in the general sense. But most of the time, we're actually not going to use R directly via the console. So usually we are going to run code in R through a script. So a script is really a text file where you type the commands that you're going to want to execute in the console. But because it's a text file, you can simply save it and then you can open it for later, re-execute it. This is a very important thing in data analysis because you want to be able to reproduce your analysis uh, on the fly. So most of the time we're going to use scripts and you can do that, uh, you can get a new script by going to file, new file R script in R Studio, or preferably use a, a shortcut like control shift plus N on a PC or command plus shift plus N on a Mac. So we're gonna to go to R Studio and do that real quick. So if I go to file, new file R script, then you can see here's a new script that I can have, or I can hit control shift N. You can't see my keyboard, but that's what I'm hitting here, control shift N. And you can see that another file just opened up. So that's how we open new scripts. And I can type something in the script. Okay, so I'll type one plus one here. And then I can go to file, save, or save as to save that script for later use. Or even better, hit control S or command S if you're on a Mac. And we'll bring up a save dialog box where you can save the script for later use. So I don't want to save this, so I'm not going to actually do that. But in your case, if you want to save the script, you'd give it a file name with a .r extension. So you might have file.r here. The .r extension makes it easy to open it up later. And then you can just double click on that file, open it up in RStudio, and you are good to go. So we've already talked about that. Uh, so I already mentioned packages. So packages are very important in, in R. They're collections of functions, data, and other objects that extend the functionality installed by default in R. So there's a basic set of functionality that you get when you first install R, and then these packages allow you to extend the functionality in various ways. So you can install additional packages via the install.packages function in R, and then you can load these packages using the library function. And so we want to do an example of how to do that. And so uh, you'll learn pretty quickly here that we routinely use the tidyverse in R. It's really an ecosystem of packages, R packages, uh, that are heavily used in data science. So for wrangling data and for plotting data, and it's really a collection of packages that include ggplot2, which is really a, a grammar of graphics-based approach for creating plots, per, uh, which is a way of doing functional programming in R, and the tibble package, which is really an advanced data frame. You don't know what a data frame is yet, but we will talk about that shortly. dplyr, which is a grammar for data manipulation, and then tidyr, which is a collection of tools for data manipulation. Uh, so these kind of go hand in hand. String R, which is a package for manipulating character or string data in R. The read R package, which is a package for importing data. And then the for cats package, which is a package for working with categorical data. And so we're gonna heavily use some of these packages. Probably we'll use all of them to some extent, um, but, Combine these, these are gonna make the Tidyverse uh, R package, or really the, the Tidyverse ecosystem. And they have a website here that you can go to, so we can open that up and oops, didn't load for some reason. Uh, but if we type www.tidyverse.org, then you'll see the website here, and you can see all the different packages that are part of this. And uh, it, it's a place that you can go to learn more about the, the ecosystem in general if you, if you so choose. Okay, so 
what do we want to do? So since we need this uh, set of packages, we're actually going to install it, or at least I'm going to show you how to install it. I'm not going to install it on my computer because I already have it. Uh, so what you want to do here is you can hit uh, Control C or type install.packages tidyverse. Don't forget the quotes here. So we can go in our studio. We can paste that in here. We can type that and hit enter. And it's going to go through the process of installing these. And actually, maybe I should go through these. So we will go to install. It takes a little while. It has to look to see what's available here. And then it starts installing that. So I'm going to let that install. Actually, maybe I'm going to stop it. So you let it. You you can let it keep going. I'm going to stop that so that uh, uh, it doesn't keep going. And then if I want to load the tidyverse, I can simply type library, all lowercase there, and type the name tidyverse. And you can see as I'm typing there that various packages that are available on my computer in particular, it will start showing them. So we want to load the tidyverse. So I do that, hit enter, and it will bring up what uh, is loaded here. And you can see here that it shows what packages it's attaching. It shows the version number, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's important because sometimes these packages change and can mess up your functionality. It shows conflicts. This is actually called max masking uh, more generally. And so the dplyr package here has a filter function that masks or overwrites the default stats filter function. Uh, and then the lag function in dplyr also masks the lag function that's by default in stats. And so uh, what that means is that if I call these functions, I probably want to be clear about which version I'm calling, or at least recognize that this, if I type filter, the filter function, it's going to call this one by default, as opposed to this one. There's some other warning messages here. So I have a special version of our, uh, of our installed on my computer made by Microsoft. It runs a little faster for linear algebra, um, but it's a little older. And so it's upset saying that these packages were built for a newer version of R, which is probably not an issue, but that's what that warning is about. So another thing I want to make you aware of is comments. So you will see these come up quite frequently. So a comment, what is a comment in computer code? Really, it's a way to in uh, a way of internally documenting what you're doing in the code. And so these are things that are written for yourself or for other people to let you know what the code is supposed to do, why you did something in a certain way, those kinds of things, so that when you look at the code or when someone else looks at the code, they, they hopefully can understand what you're doing. And in R, the comment symbol is the pound sign or the hashtag symbol, depending on how old you are. Uh, and it, what it means is that when you have that symbol in a set of R code, nothing to the right of the pound sign or hashtag sign is going to be executed in the console. So it might pass through the console, but R is not going to do anything with it. It just runs it or it, it just looks at it and then basically ignores what happens. So here's an example here uh, that I tried to do. So um, in basically, if I, I can execute one plus one and then have a hashtag after that. And you can see if I run that in R, the R console. So it produces the result of one plus one, two, but it doesn't really do anything with this. So I have that. So I know that I'm adding one plus one, but it simply returns the result of two. Um, if I had another set of code here that was that started with the hashtag symbol, notice that it will not get executed. So it runs through the interpreter, but nothing is produced because uh, it was commented. So it didn't execute two plus two in this particular example. Uh, so one of the things you'll you'll realize is that oftentimes you want to comment multiple lines of code in R, and that's actually pretty easy to do. So the way that you want to do that, so I'll show you in R here. So I'll type one plus one and two plus two in my console. And so the one way you can do that is to go up to code here and then go to comment or uncomment lines. That's not the best way to do it. So in general, you want to highlight the, the row numbers here the line numbers that you want to comment, and then hit Control Shift C if you're on a PC, or Command Shift C if you're on a Mac, and then you uncomment that same thing. I just hit Control Shift C again, and the comments go away. And so that's a nice, fast way of commenting code in R.